Today, this is a 10 tips on how to expose F-Log. Five steps and 10 tips for exposing F-Log. Let's get into it. Before we get into this, I just wanna say it's taken me about two hours to get all of this set up. I might do a behind the scenes or whatever on how I set this shot up. Because man, So yeah, I've always struggled exposing F-Log. S-Log, not so much. I understand there's a, an exposure range. There's a ton of information out there on how to expose S-Log. F-Log, not so much. But let's get into step one, which is good exposure, which leads us into tip one. Good exposure starts with understanding what you are exposing for. Are you exposing for the highlights or are you exposing for the shadows? Now let's take a look at this shot right here where you have the windows in the background and you have to decide if you want to see outside the windows or you want to see the subject. We can introduce more light into the scene to expose for the subject for a more balanced exposure, but you need to decide what you're exposing for, the subject or the environment. Tip two, good exposure depends on the tools you use to monitor your exposure, such as an external monitor that has false colors, zebras, histograms, parade, RGB. If you do not have a monitor, you can use your camera's internal exposure tools like zebras, clipping, and your exposure meter. But tip three, good exposure also includes the quality of the light. Natural light is the highest quality light you can afford because it's free. Artificial lights range from high quality to low quality, and you get what you pay for. Although there are some nice lights out there that you can get for super cheap, like the Godox SO60W, the newer 660 panel light, and there's a ton of other lights out there that are super cheap that you can get that uh, the quality is good, but it's not as great. Tip four, good exposure also starts with your lens. What is the quality of the glass you have and how much light can the lens let in to hit the sensor? Or in better words, does it have a wide aperture in a case you are in a low light situation like the one I'm in right now? Right now I'm using the Sony 20 millimeter F1.8 in this scene, 1.8 is wide but for this space, a 1.4 or 1.2 on a 20 millimeter would be great. I don't know if that's possible, but if that lens came out, I would definitely grab it in a heartbeat. Step two, balance your whites. Step two only has one tip, and that is white balance is very important. I could have grouped white balance in with exposure, but it deserves its own full step. White balance is important because it will help when it comes to color separation when you are editing your footage, which we will be talking about editing and balancing a little later, but there have been numerous times where I got the white balance wrong in camera, especially in the Fujifilm X-H1, that when I got into post and tried to correct it, it just looked bad, but learn from my mistakes and wasted hours of recording, editing, re-recording, just to get it right. Now, step three. Manage your highlights and shadows. And that leads us to tip six. Managing the highlights and the shadows start in camera, but they also have to be monitored when you're working with your footage. You can monitor your highlights and shadows using your monitoring tools and your video software, also known as your NLE, but you also wanna start with the monitoring while you're shooting in camera. But let's focus on when you're in your NLE. I've always heard other creators refer to your editing software as an NLE, and I never knew what they were talking about. I wanted to add that in here because that is something I learned when I was today years old. And so if you're ever watching a video and you're wondering like, what are they talking about? Uh, NLE is your video editing software. But let me show you why you have to monitor your highlights and shadows. When you are exposing your log footage, you will see a ton of information in the image when you're capturing it. And it can look like you're exposing your footage properly. But when you get into your NLE, 
and recover your shadows and highlights and add in some saturation, you will lose information, especially when you add in contrast. You can lose your image fast. Like all the details, those fine, intricate details in the shadows that you were looking to keep, you will lose them. So make sure you expose your footage properly in camera when it comes to exposing your highlights and shadows. This could be adding more light to bring up the exposure of your shadows, taking away light to better expose the highlights and flagging off light to better shape your light based on the mood of your scene. This could be trial and error, but keep your current camera as long as you can, enough to learn its quirks and you will learn how to properly expose your footage with your current camera because you can trade in your camera for another camera that you think is better, but still really don't know how to expose an image and still have the same problems that you're having with the camera that you currently have. So if you have that throwaway camera, that camera that you're currently struggling with, you know, learn how to expose it with the lights you have, with everything you have, learn how to get a good image out of it before tossing it. And then, especially when you get to the editing stage and you're editing software or you're in LE, figure out how to tweak it in order to best fine tune your color, your highlights and your shadows in order to get a good image. So when you get that better camera, you actually know what you're doing. You're not struggling in the learning process of how to expose your highlights and shadows. Fine tune your color balance by utilizing color contrast or complementary colors. Remember what I mentioned earlier about white balance and color separation? White balance helps with fine tuning your colors. It doesn't matter if you are using the basic color tools in Final Cut Pro, the expert tools in DaVinci Resolve, or the plugin that trumps them all, Dehancer. And if you're not using a computer and you're using a tablet, I guess you have Final Cut Pro, DaVinci Resolve, but you also have LumaFusion. And all of these softwares, making sure that your Y balance is on point will help you with your color separation. All of these tools can help, but it all starts with your understanding of exposing properly in camera, color contrast, flagging and shaping and adding or taking away light. Step four, utilizing plugins and LUTs. Tip seven, plugins can definitely assist you in converting your footage, color management, and speeding up your conversion workflow. And this brings me back to Dehancer. I can run you through how to manually convert your footage. However, utilizing plugins like Dehancer is a one-stop shop to converting log footage, color management, and everything else under the sun when it comes to creating a pleasing image or a cinematic image. It can definitely help with replication and accuracy when it comes to matching shots. On top of that, it comes with film simulations, advanced monitoring tools, and creative tools like grain, halation, bloom, film damage, and a ton of other tools that you can check out in the playlist that I linked above and down in the description. Tip eight, LUTs. LUTs cancel out everything I just mentioned about Dehancer and plugins. LUTs are basically filters you can apply to your footage to convert it from log to rec 709 and to create a stylized look. You have three basic LUTs that you can use. You have a technical LUT, a creative LUT, and a LUT that is both combined with a technical and a creative. But to decide what you want to use, you have to determine how much control you want to have over your color management and grading. Step five, experiment. Tip nine, make sure you are out there experimenting. It is the best way to learn your capabilities and the capabilities of your camera. It will help you determine if you actually need to upgrade your camera. Eight times out of 10, the camera you already have is go for 90% of what you're already doing. Tip 10, share your work. You want to share your work to get critical feedback. There are people out there who would love to see what you're doing, may love what you're doing, may hate it, may not like it, and possibly just don't care. I know these last tips really seem like they didn't have nothing to do with exposing F-Log, but they actually do. Sharing what you are working on to get that critical feedback, to really understand you know, some of your downsides with what you're working on is always great when it comes to doing whatever it is that you're doing, whether it's photography or filmmaking. Learning how to expose your camera, learning more about your camera, learning the blind spots where you know you may need some guidance is always great when you can get that. But I wanna thank you for watching this video, liking, subscribing while staying awesome. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. See you in the next one. Thank you.